In our meditation on the larger catechism this morning, we come to questions numbers 140 and 141, which read as follows. Which is the Eighth Commandment? The answer is that the Eighth Commandment is, Thou shalt not steal. What are the duties required in the Eighth Commandment? The answer, the duties required in the Eighth Commandment are truth, faithfulness, and justice in contracts and commerce between men, between man and man, rendering to everyone his due, restitution of goods unlawfully detained from the right owners thereof, giving and lending freely according to our abilities and the necessities of others. Moderation of our judgments, wills, and affections concerning worldly goods. A provident care and study to get, keep, use, and dispose these things which are necessary and convenient for the sustentation of our nature and suitable to our condition. A lawful calling and diligence in it. Frugality. Avoiding unnecessary lawsuits and suretyship or other like engagements, and an endeavor by all just and lawful means to procure, preserve, and further the wealth and outward estate of others as well as our own. <clears throat> One might not have thought that the Word of God has something to say about contracts about business relationships and the way that we enter into uh, agreements with one another to conduct certain affairs. But scriptures are not merely something of a mythological nature up there in the heavens, talking about life up above, they also deal with life in this world. God gives us counsel and advice as to how we are to order our lives and make arrangements for ourselves and others. In particular, this commandment has to deal with our relationship to money, finances, um, work, and the means to attain money and finances. And the commandment is careful to safeguard what we have called from time to time the right to private property, uh, the right that individuals have to the ownership of their possessions. Uh, they are not subject to just simply confiscation, whether it be by other individuals or other states in an unlawful manner. God gives us the right to own property, to enjoy that property, to make use of it, to develop it, indeed to share it with others as well. Uh, so the commandment does address what it means not to steal. Here we begin to talk about contracts and commerce between man and man, the kinds of things that occur when you go to the mall and make a purchase from Macy's or what have you. Uh, God's Word governs those transactions. You might not think of that, but it does. What the Word of God requires is that we give to everyone his due. Uh, and when we uh, find that there are things that have been unlawfully detained, we should restore them. The command with regard to uh, not stealing provides positive encouragements for us. It's not simply to be understood in the negative. We shouldn't steal. I shouldn't go to the candy store and take some chocolates. Instead, it also has to do positively with what with what I must do. And part of that will be to lend and give freely according to my ability and to the necessities of others. God gives us worldly wealth not so that we can hoard it up for ourselves and amass a fortune for ourselves. Uh, there are warnings in Scripture against that. Rather, God blesses us with this world's goods so that not only can we provide for our homes and our families and our church, but also care for the poor and the needy and those who are indigent, God gives us blessings so that we might bless others. Our perception of our properties and our worldly goods needs to be governed by this commandment. We don't simply uh, set our hearts on these things as though all of life is wrapped up in the possessions that we have. We should hold these things lightly. Remember, the rich young ruler came to Jesus and asked him, what must I do to obtain eternal life? And when he told him, you must sell all your goods and give them to the poor and come follow me, he went away distressed because he had a lot of worldly goods. He couldn't bear to part with these things. Christ calls us to hold on to the things of this life lightly and to be ready, if necessary, to give them up or at least to have them 
taken away for the sake of the gospel. And so there should be a moderation of our judgments, wills, and affections concerning worldly goods. View them in the light of God's kingdom. There should be a provident care to study and get dispose of these things. Be very careful with what the, the Lord does give to you in your finances. Manage your books. Understand what your expenses are. Uh, live within your means. That's uh, an appropriate way to live. Uh, pursue those things which are necessary and convenient. Um, suitable to your condition. A lawful calling, that is to say, a, a good job, is an important way in which we fulfill this commandment. We are to work, to labor, to earn our own bread. Rather than just sit back and wait for everyone to provide for us, we have a contribution to make in this world and we should do what we can to contribute. So a lawful calling, not just any calling, not just anything, but one which is uh, appropriate. And then diligence within it, frugality, uh, not spending everything you, you earn on yourself, avoiding unnecessary lawsuits, lawsuits and suretyship. Uh, a surety is becoming a pledge for somebody else. And having uh, your wealth tied up with somebody else's um, behaviors. So you need to be careful of that. Uh, finally, seeking what is necessary to procure, preserve, and further the wealth and outward estate of others. The command does not have to do simply with our own possessions or our own needs. We should look to, to try to prosper for ourselves, but also to seek the prosperity of others. Helping them find jobs, helping them find good work, getting training or education for that job or what have you, encouraging them in that. Um, developing a good economy is a helpful way in which Christians can serve within our world today. Producing a, an economy which preserves the wealth of others and sustains their outward estate. We'll look more at that in, in the weeks to come, but here God gives us positively the things that we should do to keep this Eighth Commandment.